four dragons down and one dragon left, and a second half full of intellectual property theft. This month on D D minus. As you deal your final blow to the white dragon, the room around you fades once again. But unlike all the other times in this cave where an illusion has turned into another illusion, this feels real. You are very clearly in a dark and giant cave that looks exactly like Tiamat's lair as you saw it under Darkmoor Castle. The second indication that this is real is that Tiamat is right in front of you. Well, not quite Tiamat. See, Tiamat's a god, and gods can't die, but she's very obviously weakened. All but one of her heads are slumped in sleep or unconsciousness, and her physical form seems almost to flicker in and out of existence as you look at her. That said, the head that is awake and aware is the aspect of the black dragon. Oh, we're in like a Back to the Future scenario with like the picture disappearing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if he's if he's interrupting, then I'm gonna just slap each one on the back and cure wounds real fast. I'm sorry. One second. Cure wounds. No. Is Cedric. Wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Cedric. Cedric. No. Cedric. No. You're not curing anybody's wounds. Nice. No. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. This is Cedric. Do not sla- Do not cure wounds while I'm narrating. Keep doing nineteen. It. Cedric, I'm- take nineteen. <laughs> This Got is it. an ideal time to, to cure wounds when you're not paying attention. When I, excuse me, I this is in character. I am seeing a big fuck off dragon right now in front of me and we need to clean <laughs> some fucking wounds. I'm sorry. Here we go. And this one's for, and this one's for Dave. 16, Dave. Go. Nice. If Tiamat's got time to flicker, she's got time to give us health, I think. This one's for Claw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Take it and run with it. 20 claw. And this one's for me. I love this so much. The God of the universe is like, hey, should, no, stop it. Stop it. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking 26. God damn it. I am only allowing this if when the graphic novel comes out, while I'm describing this epic moment in your battle against Tiamat, Bridget is running around like an asshole, <laughs> slapping everybody, curing wounds. That's the opposite of an asshole. I'm doing it again for myself because he's still talking. Jerkin. You're a jerk. You're a jerk who ruins. <laughs> You're a jerk. Do we actually add these points? Yes, no, you do. I'm, take, they, <laughs> I'm taking away my spell slots every time I do this. You better fucking add them. I added them. <laughs> I added mine. Anyways, <laughs> the head that is awake <laughs> and aware. I'm feeling healed right now. I just want to say that out loud. I feel nice and healed. Yeah, well, we'll see how well this Good. fucking, this first attack of the black dragon goes. Anyways. <laughs> 19, 27, and 18. That's out. If only I had some form of reference for how many hit points he's going to take away from each of you. (laughs) Anyways, as I was narrating, the head that is awake is the aspect of the black dragon, which our regular listeners will remember we have made Jewish because... Believe it or not, that is less problematic than Dungeons and Dragons canon, which is that <laughs> black dragons are evil. I also would like to state for the record, before I start to do this character's voice, that I am very proud of my Jewish heritage, but I also believe it's important for us to have a good sense of humor about what we love and as we do and what we don't. So this is what he says. Shabbat shalom, adventurers. Well, well, well. Sneaking into our grandparents' body to steal my jewel. Is it Friday already? No, it's not Friday. I'm looking outside. The sun hasn't set yet. Nice try. Uh, so it's, yeah, well then why so would it you is, say So it? it is Friday and the sun so hasn't it is set? Fri- okay. No, it's not Friday. It's Thursday. Canonically. So you're, so you're not supposed to say... So, so it's not Shabbat Shalom? Shabbat Shalom yet. I was trying to think of a Jewish thing to say. Shabbat Shalom is what I... Aloha. <laughs> Nope, that's Hawaii. Close. It's just Shalom then, wasn't it? I have so many jokes that I can't say right now. God damn it. (laughs) Hey, imagine if I was a black voice, right? (laughs) Dragon just walks up. Jewish. Ah, I was just naming mine. Oh, wait. Do you have a pig you could summon? 
What? You what? A, fr- a pig what? ham? They can't eat ham. Everyone just straps pigs around their bodies <laughs> and they're like, ah. It's a dragon. It can't eat us then, you Defe- know? Yeah, exactly. Defeated once and for all. With bacon. Anyways, Black Dragon says, sneaking in your grandparents' body to steal my jewel, are you? And you defeated all the other heads. Quite impressive, but if I can be honest with you, the mushbucha, they're distractions. Being a dragon isn't about greed or manipulation or honor or even fire-breathing, Mishigas. It's about me. It's about being evil. What's mishpuka? Uh Mishpuka means like the, the rabble. Ooh. I, I need Duolingo for this. So like the other dragons are the mishpuka? Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's referring to the other dragon Got heads it. as mishpuka. Yeah. Guys, I don't have any kind of pig or boar transformation here. Yeah, sure. I, I, I feel like having the root of all evil be the Jews is sure is not at all problematic. <laughs> right. Welcome to the David Icke episode of Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> that we'll be doing. We were all having a good time like seven episodes and ago. And you're a lizard. Wait. Oh, my God. And one of you assholes, <laughs> one of you assholes made him Jewish. We set it up. We got to knock it down. We can't chicken out. Black Dragon just starts choking on a cookie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't flinch here. Do you have a pillow you want to sell me or something? That's That guy's not Jewish. What are you doing? Now you're doing like a I, totally different thing. You're, <laughs> stay on brand. <laughs> Focus up. Anyways. But tonight, mine is not the only evil you'll be fighting. It's yours. And with that, Ooh. he breathes out a cloud of black menorah-shaped smoke. Wow, it's right on the nose. Sorry. They see you're getting into it, right? <laughs> Fills your lungs and mind with every angry and bitter thought you've ever had, every jealous impulse, every selfish desire, they come rushing to the forefront. And as you try to push those thoughts and feelings down and the smoke clears away, Tiamat, such as she is, attacks. Everybody, roll initiative for me. That's an unnatural 20 for you. Ooh, I see that. Ditto, unnatural 20. So that's a 23. 23. All right. Snedrick, you were up first. Here is how this faddle is going to work. Every time it's your turn, you and Tiamat's final head are going to have a battle of wills. We are going to roll opposing D100s. I will be rolling with advantage. You will be rolling with disadvantage. But... This is a battle of wills, not luck. So you can boost your rolls with hit points. If you win, you take your turn like normal. But if I win, I take your turn. This is like a banned magic card, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll this publicly if I can. We can never see it. I know you can never see it. I have an 88. I feel good about that. Oh, no, I have disadvantage. Disadvantage. I have an 80. I have a 99, an 88 and a fucking 99. I'm glad you guys could see that. Otherwise, like, you wouldn't believe me. You know what? Mm -hmm. Someone else said it, not me. (laughs) All right. Um... (laughs) See, dog, fuck bear, just roll call really quick while we're waiting. (laughs) Great. Yes, master. Okay, just when it's your turn, pipe up. Carry on. Yeah, so I'm going to use my lightning strike since I'm still a storm giant from last time. So... So each creature within 10 feet of the point must make a DC 17 dexterity saving throw, taking 12 D8 lightning damage on a failed safe or half as much on a successful one. All right. Dexterity saving throw. That is a nat one. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. I got 44 with my 12 D8. Nice. All right. Bonus actions, movement, anything like that? Um, no, nah, I think I'm good. All right. I mean, I'm just going to, like, actually, I'm going to kind of lean, you know, just sort of like <laughs> one foot up, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, cr- legs crossed. I, against what? Are we looking at weird? Oh, you're a storm giant. But I'm a giant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this black dragon looks at all of you and blows out a huge wave of acid breath. This is a DC... Fuck. 22 dexterity saving throw. And we get advantage on those, right? Yes. Yes. Shit. I got 22 with my first roll. Yeah, I got Ooh. 22. I got 21 with my second. I failed both times. All right. So, Bridget and Dave, you are going to take... Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Dave's probably dead. 
55 points of damage. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, uh, shit. Okay. You're knocked out. I'm not dead yet. You're not dead. Wow. You five hit points? I have five hit points. Woo. Okay. All right. Uh, Brant, you are up. All right. First, I am going to Exalted Champion. Wait, don't you have to do the, the D100 thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yep, good catch. Sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. If, if I realized hey. Eli had also forgotten, I would just <laughs> say the damn thing. My I didn't forget. I didn't forget. My first roll is 51. 90. Nice. Ooh. But roll with disadvantage. Do we have to do it twice? Yeah, with disadvantage. 51 was my first roll, and 19 is my second roll. Oh, but that, <laughs> oh, that will be Bridget shit. 7. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> which means... I will be taking your turn instead. I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to die. That's what's going to happen. So. Well, he could attack one of us. Yeah, I was going to say. just going to murder us one by one for interrupting the speech with you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Quigley just shows up. Ha ha! Now I can finish my very important <laughs> monologue. Okay, let me see here. I am going to attack with... Your Holy Avenger Longsword. I'm just going to get out some popcorn and start munching <laughs> it and watching everything. Yeah, so you, you're you going to take a swing at Talon. So I'm not going to take a swing. Oh, but you are. Yeah, you are. You're, oh, shit. You're going to take a swing at Talon. It's going to be with disadvantage, obviously, because Talon is invisible. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take that swing. Uh, do I have to do it? I can do it for you if you'd like. No, oh, shit. Okay. No, I let Anna do it. It'll be like, it'll feel like <laughs> betrayal if Anna does it. Yeah, right? exactly. This is, this is, okay. This is for all the shit you stole in that first episode. <laughs> you don't need a reason. <laughs> I feel like she had a reason. Though. 32 to hit. <laughs> yeah, she had a lined up. That does, <laughs> that does indeed hit. I'm sorry. Mm. You ready for this slashing damage? Yeah. 18. Cool. Are you dead? Oh, no, not even close. Oh, thank God. Okay. And I believe you get two attacks, right? Yeah, two attacks. No, I don't. I'm I don't get right, two attacks. Wait, right do I get two attacks? Have I gotten two attacks this entire time? <laughs> Perhaps you did, but if you look on your actions tab, it says attacks per action, two. Fucking shit! So let's give Claw another stab a Rooney. An unarmed strike. Uh, no, uh, just another stab. Pretty sure it's an unarmed strike, actually. <laughs> nope, it is a Holy Avenger longsword, please. Oh, look, I dropped my sword by accident. It is <laughs> 28 to hit. Yeah, 28 hits. I'm sorry. All right. And you're going to actually use your divine smite here. What's my divine smite? When you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can expend one spell slot to deal 2d8 extra radiant damage to your target plus 1d8 for each spell level. You play my level. character better than I do, and I don't <laughs> like it. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's no. a good deal. You can use any spell slot you want, like a first level. Yep. Yeah, that's a good deal. But we're going to go ahead and use a fifth level spell slot for this one. Oh, uh, we'll see if that actually happens. Hmm, I'm already out of those. No, you're not. You have one I left. I am. I have what? You have one left. Fuck you. God damn it. <laughs> so wait, how do I roll that damage? I already rolled part of it. Yeah, so you rolled your first part of your damage. Uh-huh. And that was 22 damage. All right. And then on top of that, you are going to roll 2d8 first. That's an extra nine. And then an additional 5d8 on top of that. What? Mm -hmm. Why an additional 5d8? Plus 1d8 for each spell level higher than first. So that would be 4d8. Uh, oh, yeah, 4d8. Well, no, it's one plus one for every. Then that's minus three. That's a uh, eight. All right. And with that, your turn is over. I'm still alive. Braggy. Good. <laughs> Talon, you are up with your 26 hit points. All right. D100. 90. 90, not bad. Yeah, but remember, she rolled a seven second. Doesn't really matter. 29. Not uh, good. My first one's a 32, unfortunately. Fuck you. <laughs> so you're going to turn that oath bow on Bridget, I'm afraid. I'm going to laugh when we have to record this again in a week because you kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> I still have 230 hit points. How? Because I turned oh, into a storm, storm giant. giant and the storm yeah, giant storm hasn't giant. been hit. 
Fuck yeah. This is going to be fun. Just a storm giant and a four dead head dragon just duking mm-hmm. it out. Can you turn us into the fucking dinosaurs and <laughs> <Right? sphinxes> and shit? <laughs> well, actually, wait a second. We know that our grandparents survive. You don't know if they already had their kids. Oh, fuck. I'm going to check my wallet, you know, see if there's any pictures. <laughs> also, of kids. we know they survive, though. Mm. Come on. You do not have plot armor, my friend. In fact, many would call this death of your grandparents a, a moving and cathartic experience. Oh, okay. So we're supposed to die. Got it. Oh. <laughs> and gravitas to the podcast. You guys want to just kill ourselves? Kind of. He was not talking about in game just now. <laughs> oh, no. It's been a tough couple of months. Oh, no. uh, yeah. No, I meant, I meant in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> do we get disadvantage if we're not attacking Tiamat? Like, if we're just attacking ourselves, I guess we could just attack, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Roll that attack on uh, Bridget for me. Okay. Come at me, baby. 19. That shouldn't hit, right? That, it will, will not hit. No. Will not hit. All right, try again. No. <laughs> you get two attacks per turn, don't you? Yeah, 14. Fuck you, Eli. Oh, nope. yeah. All right, and then uh, the only other thing, as a bonus action, I'm going to have you take off your ring of invisibility. You shitbag. <laughs> it's like I'm what Eli's trying to get us to do, and you're like <laughs> us. <laughs> I hate, I hate this so much. <laughs> and of course, Cerebus and Yugoloth. Yugoloth disappears and Cerebus can't act when Dave is unconscious. Oh, no, the Yugoloth's gone? Mm. Yeah, the Yugoloth. The, Wait, can they talk still? No, so here's what happens. Listen, listen as I narrate in a deep tragedy. As Dave, you fall unconscious. Bridget, heal us right now. Fuck, man, stop it. <laughs> Stop healing people while I'm talking. This podcast will not be who can talk the fucking fastest. The it's podcast. not my turn. We've rolled initiative already. Sorry. Right, thank God. Oh, those rules she respects, everybody. Okay. Weird code of morals. We haven't rolled initiative. It was all free actions, man. Okay. Dave, <laughs> as you collapse to the ground, which technically you did it earlier, but now I remembered to make a dramatic moment of it. Got it. The Yugoloth turns to you, puts up finger guns of a romantic nature and says... <laughs> And then disappears into Spider-Man Avengers dust. You know what I'm talking about? Aww. Yeah. I'm dead, so I can't even do anything. You, well, you're unconscious. You're not dead. So, uh, but I can't. I can't talk back and be like, "I love you too." You can talk back if you want. I guess you're single again too. <gasps> uh, okay. I guess I can't do that. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> All the dust pulls back together into the Yugala. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you said, did you say something? Yeah, no, it's dust again. Okay. <laughs> Make your first uh, death saving throw for me, Dave. Death saves, failure successes. It's an eight. Mm. Eight, that does not save. Do I get advantage? No. You do not. Do I have luck? Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a feat for you to decide. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's add some luck here. What do I need to get back alive, by the way? You need three higher than 10 rolls in a row. Okay. Yeah, let's, it's, it's a life or death, literally. I'm going to use the luck thing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So an, I roll another d20. Mm-hmm. Got it. Motherfuck! Nine. Ah, uh, <laughs> you hate to see it. <laughs> One strike. All right, Snedrick, things wheel back around to you, but before you take your turn, you feel a large thud. Above your head. Oh, shit. Uh, That's it? I just, I feel a thud? Yeah, it's like something above the ground is sort of shaking the earth. Is this you coming in to, like, fight yourself at the end of it after you defeated (laughs) this? It's just, I just, and then Eli Bosnick comes down into the game. (laughs) Pops in with a a Kool-Aid, man. My God, you've done (laughs) that twice already in this thing. All right. I'm going to turn into an adult gold dragon, damn it. We're going to have some dragon on dragon action. (gasps) And now I'm going to do my... And and I probably I'm going to do a... No, Jesus, I probably shouldn't have done that. You're going to do your little turn on the catwalk? Well, no, I was gonna, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn into a gold dragon, and then he's going to get to take my fucking turn. Yeah, and then you're going to attack mm-hmm. Bridget or something. Yeah, right, right. Roll those D100s for me. A 40. Ugh. 
And hopefully that's the one I'm going with. And a 94. So, yeah. All 40. right. 94 is not bad. I got a 12 and. 94 a, doesn't matter, though. It's the 40. That yeah. A 12 and a 27. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Your turn is yours. Yeah. Kill him. Kill him now. Quickly. Yeah. I don't have as many good attacks with this motherfucker as I had with the other thing. Um, all right. I'm going to do fire breath. He must make a dexterity saving throw, DC 21 on a dexterity saving throw, taking 12 D10 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Fuck. All right. Can anything break this sort of battle? Like if, if the if Tiamat is prone or, or being grabbed, like do, can anything break this? sort of cycle the battle of wills thing yeah if he's if he's a hell like in you know in a wrestling match with like the gold dragon like do we then get to not have to battle will every turn no the smoke that he poisoned you with has oh, the effect okay. yeah ah the menorah smoke that was an eight so he's gonna take full damage she is gonna take full damage she is gonna take 62 damage oh yes 62 damage this blast of fire comes scorching into the dragon and the dragon slams back against the cave wall, stalagmites and stalactites falling in between them. And in that moment, you see something in the black dragon's eyes that you haven't seen in the eyes of any of the aspects yet. You see fear. And surprisingly, Tiamat's body, fragile and damaged as it is, instead of regaining its balance or, you know, taking an attack against you, it blasts through the roof of the underground cave you are in, and you watch as it tries to fly away to escape the uh, damage that you've already done to it. But before it can, a giant stone hand grasps Tiamat's tail and brings it crashing to earth. A head leans over and you realize the moving keep fortress that your grandparents built <gasps> has transformed into a giant moving battling colossus fuck oh, that's cool Hey, everybody, just jumping in once again to thank you for listening to the show. We love making it, and we're glad you enjoy listening to it. Real quick, if you enjoy the show, you're having a good time, you want to help this show get made, why not support us over at patreon.com forward slash dnd minus. For as little as a dollar, you get access to bonus episodes and behind the scenes dungeon masters corners, all that good stuff. But if you can't afford to give us your money, we completely understand. You can head over to wherever you review your podcasts, iTunes, podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen, and give us one of those five-star reviews I've heard so much about. Not only does it help spread the information of the show around, but I also get a nice little email that tells me that you like the show or didn't like the show. So there's a way to be spiteful if you need that as well. All right, we will see you next month. I'll let you get back to the show. So here's how this is going to work. You are all sucked into the body of this Colossus. Sorry, Snetric, you have to turn back into uh, whatever you were. <laughs> And you don't get to breathe any more fire. But you are now fighting as this combined colossus that your grandparents built all out of their own vehicles and such. And so you are going to act on your turn for the colossus. And basically, picture uh, Power Rangers Megazord. This is like right? Voltron? <laughs> yeah, it's Voltron. like Voltron. Yeah. I, I was Power just saying, we're too old for fucking Megazords. These are Voltron uh, lions. Yeah, is this yeah. us? We're in the drift, like in Pacific Rim. Exactly. Is this like Evangelion? Yeah, that's a better one. Yeah. Mech suit, baby. I call right foot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait, is right foot, right foot is the pink <laughs> lion? Is it the pink? I'm just a right-footed soccer player, so that's what I'll take. You oh, chose the I pink lion. No, it's too late. You chose the pink lion. I'm happy with the pink you lion. You chose the pink lion. I will choose the left foot so that Dave doesn't choose it and try to go <laughs> off and throw bread somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, nope, that's fair. Limit movement. Yeah. Or try to do a tap dance. All right. Well, I'm going to take right arm because Dave's dead and, and we probably need at least one living arm. All right. I'll take fucking torso and we'll be one armless because otherwise there's no torso <laughs> and that's insane. Yeah. <laughs>
I mean, there would be a torso. There's already a torso. The torso's built in. What's the torso's going to do? Are you going to chest bump him to death? going to hold together the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're Look, the Colossus ballast. I'm going to digest. <laughs> I was very excited for this Megazord battle, but we all have to admit, it's a lot funnier if Dave stays unconscious <laughs> and is just being gently shaken back and forth in his fucking <laughs> seat while you guys pull a giant sword or fire a giant. Laser. <laughs> Just me, 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 me. Wait, do I come back to life? Yeah, you come back to life because you're you're in a mech. Okay. Really? Yeah. Is that how it works? Yeah. Those are the mech rules. Cool. Have we have we broken have we broken um initiative? Yes, you're no longer in initiative. Cool. So I actually brought you back to life. Exactly. With, a, with laid, laid hands on whatever the thing is. No, you're in different zords. He got healed by the fucking moving keys. You, I didn't know they could heal. Okay. Fine. You know what? Fine. A- Angelo, in the graphic novel, I want a whole little scene where Brant Boulderstash is just hopping around the zord, fucking slapping people in the back <laughs> to wake him up. Oh, I'm not slapping him on the back. You have no sense of dramatic tension. None. <laughs> You're doing ball checks? What's happening? I can't stand still when I'm nervous. I have to run. <laughs> I have to heal people when I'm. It's a twitch yeah. more than anything. I just run, run around slapping yeah. people across the face. Compulsion. Yeah. Pew, pew. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Any order you want, do something Zordy. Cool. All right. Zordy. What, wait, off of our spell list or what? what? No, something Zordy. You just say it. We're out of we're now out of initiative. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot him with a laser beam. Stone grinds against stone, and suddenly your leg turns from a foot to a giant laser bazooka. And you I'm gonna do a little kick thingy. And you do a little kick thingy. The a the velope, a velope, kick, and then <laughs> at the end of it and stretch. Yep, and stretch. Kick. Oh, I look like a cat who's about to lick himself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you do the cat lick and you fire this laser into Tiamat. Bam. Giant blue beams of magic smashes into Tiamat, catches her off her guard. She, she stumbles backwards. Who's next? I'll go. What was the Street Fighter character that did the like rapid kick like, thing? Is that Dalsim? Chun Li. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it was Chun Li. Yeah. It was definitely I'm going to do the. Well, Chun Li did one too. Mm-hmm. Dalsim didn't have a rapid kick. He didn't? Did he not? Did he have a rapid punch? I'm just picturing Heath turning to the side of his house where he's still got Street Fighter 2 move lists. <laughs> no, like I, I do. And Dalsim had a rapid nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do the Chun Li rapid kick as the right foot. Oh, I love it. To like the, like up and down the head and neck area. Exactly. Karate, you, karate, 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 karate. You pivot in place for some reason to. Buns, traditional Chinese buns appear on top <laughs> of the head. Around my knee. Everyone can see the robot's <laughs> underwear, and we all remember that that game was super problematic in a lot of sexual ways. I don't know about problematic. And you fire a bevy of kicks up and down Tiamat, sort of stunning and staggering her. Who is up next? Okay, it's really weird that you did Street Fighter because I literally was like, I'm going to do a spinning pile driver like Zangief at the end of this if I can. <laughs> Oh. Heck yeah. All right, spinning Zang- Go ahead, give me the Zangief pile driver. Spinning pile driver. What, do I roll for it? No, no, you don't have to roll for it. I don't know why I asked you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the, buns, the buns come rolling down the sides of the Colossus's head and form giant Zangief-esque biceps. You grab this dragon, launch truly hundreds of miles up into the air, right? There's a guy <laughs> trying to jump off of a, of a magic thing for Red Bull, which is a drink in this universe. <laughs> and you just like high five him real quick. Bridget high fives him and heals him for five points of damage real quick because I'm talking. Nice. And you come hurtling to the earth with a giant explosion, like miles around just flattened trees, everything around just a huge explosion as you bring to the earth. Snedrick, it is time for the final blow. That's auspicious. Well, damn, that puts a lot of pressure on me. Like, I feel like I feel like the <laughs> pile driver should be also takes away the pressure. <laughs> Just like reach down and reach down and give him a good like flick. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? You remember at the beginning of Karate Kid Two? When Mr. Miyagi like goes in like he's going to do a big karate chop and he just honks his nose instead. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Live or die, wrong honk. Awesome. Yeah, right. Yeah, the live or die thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to do that, but like really hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're going to squeeze her nose to death? Yes. <laughs> so, because, because Eli already gave away the game. He said last move. So like, I, I get to do whatever I want. I'm totally. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Some kind of nose boop is the perfect closer. Yeah. I agree with you. Oh, this. nose boop. The last waking head is like, really? I thought you might do a giant dramatic sword. In in the show, they always do. No, you're going to do the nose boop. All right. Boop your snoot. Yeah. Boop. In your fucking face. But in but like in a deadly way, but like a yeah, sure. <laughs> with cunning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah, boop you so Thank hard. You. Yeah, no, your your boop just like drives. You ever seen those animes like One Punch Man where he mm -hmm. punches the creature so hard that its neck stretches out all cartoony? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how hard you boop Tiamat. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And as the final corporal form of Tiamat fades away and returns to the nine hells, you're struck by how oddly silent it is. And then, even from the Colossus where you now stand, right where Tiamat was, you can see a brightly going gem that looks like nothing more than a half a flame frozen in time. You have collected the first half of the Fiend Stone. <laughs> All right, so... I don't, I don't, I don't mean to brag here, but, like, I think I killed at least three of those dragons. <laughs> And I'm the only one who even... There's a it. giant scoreboard listing who killed all the ethnic. Right, <laughs> yes. So, so somebody, who, somebody who listens to the show, let, just, just let me know the dragon killing count. Between <laughs> Sorry. Do you guys hear that? I feel like we no, won there's, something, No, like, right? there's credits rolling over all of this. I don't understand. Where are these credits coming from? Yeah, we collected EXP and a little bit of gill. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys hear us getting a fucking copyright strike? Because that's what I heard. Oh, shit. <laughs> Six seconds, Anna. Do you guys want to do like a Street Fighter 2 ending? Like, because yeah. we had Chun Li, she can do the thing where she's jumping up and down, and she's got yeah. the G, and then. Yeah, we'll go punch Tiamat's car into it. I like forget a what Zangief's no. was. <laughs> Heathen the fuckbear lived happily ever after. Or did they? I feel like me and the fuckbear had a thing going at the. Oh my God. Are you descended from a fuckbear and your grandparents? Are Sea Dog and the fuckbear back with us? Because we're back alive. That's who's handling the left arm, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were they left arm? They had to be. I mean, if you were torso, yeah. Yeah, they must have been. They were in the... You you look over. You didn't even realize this whole time, but you look over and Sea Dog and the fuck bear are making out. <laughs> oh, wow. shit. Yeah. Which head of Sea Dog? Brought to get all three. It's a foursome Ooh. up in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's confusing. <laughs> not to me, it's not. <laughs> Nothing more simple in the world. All right. Fiendstone or no, the moving keep is highly damaged from your battle with Tiamat. The massive structure, which was magically imbued to look like your living spaces, has pretty much turned into a giant, old-fashioned statue. But there is one small, incised structure built around one of the moving keep's wheels that's still functional. And despite the ghastly squeaking it makes when you move it forward, you manage to take just that one wheel all the way to the top of the hill that will someday host the city of Waterdeep. But as you hurry away from the structure, once you've gotten there, you can't help but feel a familiarity walking out its doors. Ween greets you as you pull up, saying, Oh man, you guys gotta see it. I told Gary about all your adventures, and well, he... You guys gotta see it. And so, once again, down you head into the sewers, where you were greeted by a familiar sight. Gary's cabin. Just like you saw it for the very first time you visited, though admittedly with newer paint and less rust on the gutters, as you step inside, you see Gary hard at work at something, his muddy body blocking most of whatever it is. But soon enough, he steps back and you recognize what he's working on. It's the seven-drawered chest. <gasps> Gary looks at you all and says, Pretty sweet, huh? I call it the day's chest lockiner. <laughs> <laughs> I figure, you know, since you guys are in the past, there's probably all sorts of stuff you want to provide for yourselves. Like, you could give yourselves hints, and heck, you could even save your own lives if you needed to. And the best part is that if I did this right, you already know what you left for yourselves and what you said in your notes. So just uh, do that. Yeah, we all totally remember that stuff. So just so I remember it. I put in a key. I don't remember what I said in the note. But oh no, it looks like this time I put in a sword. What will happen if I just put in this cool sword? Okay, 
the moment you put a sword into the drawer, Dave pops out of existence. He doesn't oh, fade. Shit. He just stops existing. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, this might be better. I'm just saying. <laughs> and moments later, Bridget, you, Brant Boulderstash, come bursting through the door. But not as you are. This version of you is scarred and injured, bloody and bruised with the wild eyes of someone who's just survived terrible catastrophe. You hand yourself the note and the key that you were supposed to send. And Brant says to you, just fucking do it. And then <laughs> Brant from the future takes out a globe from the necklace of fireballs, swallows it, and explodes with a sickling splat. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I put the key in the note in. And Dave reappears. Oh, shit. Okay. I feel like I just disappeared. I'm back now. You're welcome. <laughs> th th thank you. I could have had a really sweet sword and not had to deal with your bullshit. So, you know, you're welcome. Yeah, what's the opposite of your welcome? <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> so with the day's chest machina filled with useful plot devices, you head with Ween back to the lighthouse of time. Okay, so uh, if I have this right, you guys should go straight to the future from here. And then from the future, if if you get the second half of the Fiendstone, you'll, you'll be right back to the, the present. Well, the past to the future, but the present for you. The future from us now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also future. But before you guys go, um, I'm like a big hero in the future, right? Like, everybody likes me and I'm, I'm yep. super important. Totally. Mm -hmm. Super important. I definitely remember your character in the future. Uh, it's played Vigil. Okay. Yeah, he's the best. You gave us these very cool origami birds that we totally forgot about at one point. That's the most memorable thing that you do with your life. <laughs> yes, uh, give us origami no, birds. No, you're, you're a hero of paper birds in the future. Well done, though, Bridget. Way to, way to, way to build him up. Not, you've helped me out quite a bit, and you're, you're, we love seeing you at the bar. Okay, well, that's, that's good news. Uh, good luck. And, and Ween goes sort of skittering down the stairs, and Cerebus approaches you, Dave, and he says, Master. What's up? I know. I should not ask anything of you, but mine is a proud and strong bloodline. Yeah, no, totally get it. Whatever you need. Tell me the truth. <laughs> My demonic children, the ones from your present, do they maintain the strength and dignity of the Cerebus name? Yeah, no, absolutely. And like they, they pretty much, you, you think they're about to die, but then they don't. Like it's super good. <laughs> there, nothing goes wrong. There's not like a 10,000 piece table about penalties for when they die. Like there's nothing, nothing like, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I even said that, but like, that's not something that happens. So no, you're good. And they can breathe. You don't have breathing problems. Yeah. They breathe real well. <laughs> totally. Like mm -hmm. nice deep inhalation. They always know when it's their turn. They just speak nope. up. Have you ever had garlic bread? <laughs> it's the best. Thank you. Thank you all. And as he's saying, thank you. Everything goes black as you step into the lighthouse of time once again. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. The heroes are too busy laughing and talking amongst themselves to notice that Ween watches them intently as they disappear into the lighthouse of time. But when they're gone, she is there, hand on his shoulder, unimaginably hot in spite of her pale skin and says so do we have a deal and ween vigil looks at her and says yeah we got a deal